from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. A country without borders is not a country. I don't know why that's so hard for some people to understand. Protesters display their anger outside the Biltmore Hotel in downtown today as Attorney General Jeff Sessions defends the Trump administration's immigration crackdown. And all this on the same day the U.S. Supreme Court issues a historic ruling on another piece of the president's immigration policy, upholding his controversial travel ban. It was a whirlwind day for the Trump administration. First, a favorable Supreme Court ruling on a travel ban and now a multi-state lawsuit over immigration. Here's the latest tonight. Now, Attorney General Jeff Sessions stopped in L.A. today and cited crime by illegal immigrants as a reason for the administration's no-tolerance policy at the border. Police arrested about two dozen people who were protesting outside. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court upheld a travel ban on immigrants and visitors from six mostly Muslim-majority countries. A no ban, no wall is what they were chanting in Anaheim today as one of many protests. We do have protesters, or actually reporters rather, on both big issues tonight, including CBS 2's Lisa Siegel, who is live at LAX right now, today's travel ban ruling. But we begin with CBS 2's Dave Lopez. He's in downtown LA with more on the protests and what the Attorney General had to say about them. Dave. Well, Patty had plenty to say, and behind me is the federal building where all the commotion started today. Through the years, there have been a number of uh, attorney generals of the United States that have come to visit Los Angeles for various reasons and to give speeches. But no one in recent memory, according to many people, have ever had a reception like the one today. Thank you. The contrast like night and day. Inside the Biltmore today, Attorney General Jeff Sessions welcomed with open arms by the 110 people who attended the Criminal Justice Legal Foundation luncheon. We're not talking about shutting the United States off from the world. No ICE, no KKK, no fascist USA. Outside the Biltmore, nearly 200 loud, boisterous protesters, all there because they didn't want Sessions to be there. Reunite. The protest started Reunite. early at the federal building where there were more than 20 arrests, people who simply would not leave the middle of the street. No matter what we do, they're not happy, they complain. I never thought I'd be living in a country that has reverted back to basic slavery. If we don't fix our laws, then the flow of illegal immigration is not going to stop. Inside, the luncheon crowd applauded. Outside, no. Free the kids! No, I should not be anywhere else when there is unconscionable crimes against humanity being committed by the United States government. What is it about ending illegality that causes such an uproar, especially when we have such a generous legal system of immigration? He said the president has ended the practice of separating families, and he made it clear this administration will not accept sanctuary cities or states. So if they let them sneak out the back door of the jail, back into the community, they're only able to find about 6% of those so they can be deported properly. The people united will never be divided. There were no arrests in front of the Biltmore. None of the protesters got anywhere near the caravan that brought Sessions into the Biltmore and took him away. And he left with this promise. So this is the Trump era. We are enforcing our laws again. We know whose side we are on. So does this group, and uh, we're on the side of the police. There were very strict restrictions on the media concerning this speech. Uh, only a pool camera was allowed, no print reporters, no TV reporters, no radio, no reporters whatsoever inside. And when I asked one of the organizers if she thinks that the attorney general was aware of what was happening outside, her response to me, he is. Back to the studio. All right, thanks for that, Dave Lopez. The fight over illegal immigration once again heads to the courts. California and 16 other states are now suing the Trump administration over separating children from their families. They filed the lawsuit today. It is the first legal challenge by states and Washington, D.C. Immigration authorities have separated about 2,300 children from their parents with no clear process to track them. The lawsuit alleges migrants are denied due process and their right to seek asylum. Today, the president summed up his idea of immigration laws. It is a hodgepodge of laws that have been put together over years, and we have to change it. It's so simple. It's called, I'm sorry, you can't come in. We have a very simple message to the president of the United States. Not on our watch. Not on our watch will we stand by and allow you to rip children 
from the arms of their parents. GOP lawmakers have struggled to pass immigration legislation. It's not likely anything will be done before they take a week-long July 4th recess. Another piece of President Trump's immigration policy was upheld today by the Supreme Court. In an historic split decision, it upheld the president's most recent travel ban. It is the court's first major ruling on a Trump administration policy. In a 5-4 ruling, it said the ability to regulate immigration was within the president's constitutional powers. Now, plaintiffs argued the ban discriminates against Muslims, but Chief Justice John Roberts called that ban neutral on its face. And today, President Trump celebrated what he calls his, quote, profound vindication. The ruling shows that all of the attacks from the media and the Democrat politicians are wrong, and they turned out to be very wrong. Just because the Supreme Court decides that something is legal doesn't make it right and doesn't make it moral. Slavery was legal. Segregation was legal. Internment of Japanese Americans was legal. Now, President Trump repeatedly claimed the policy of Muslim ban in the past. Justice Sonia Sotomayor said the majority chose to ignore that. In her minority opinion, she said, quote, a reasonable observer would conclude that the proclamation was motivated by anti-Muslim animus. Opponents of the travel ban are determined to make sure the Supreme Court's ruling is not the final say. CBS 2's Lisa Siegel is live at LAX, where she spoke to people on both sides of this issue. Lisa. Well, Pat, the travel ban, as you know, is a key part of the president's campaign for the White House. Now, most travelers we spoke to and experts are saying this is not the America they know. And everyone should uh, help each other and not uh, put borders. It's the most un-American thing to ban people from actually coming in. Reaction from travelers at LAX was swift after hearing the nation's highest court ruled President Trump's travel ban is constitutional. The ban bars nationals of seven countries from entering the U.S. In five of those countries, a majority of residents are Muslim. Today is a devastating day in the history of this country. That's Mohammed Tahar with the ACLU, who joined the Council on American Islamic Relations to voice their outrage at the ruling. It is a stark reminder that the ink from the pen of the racists and the segregationists and the interners has not yet dried. The president says the policy is needed to protect the country from terrorist attacks. Carl Schusterman, former INS prosecutor and now immigration attorney, says that makes no sense to him. Most of the uh people who are terrorist on 9-11 are from countries that are not even under the travel ban. He says many of his clients are physicians from countries on the list who work in underserved communities. Now I'm getting calls from physicians that say, well, they won't let me into the United States. So who's going to suffer? It's going to be all those people who are U.S. citizens who can't get proper health care. This was a scene when Trump first rolled out a ban a week after taking office in January. It triggered chaos and protests at LAX as travelers were stopped from boarding international flights and detained for hours. That ban and another was blocked by the courts, but this one has been upheld. I think it's a bad idea to ban people. Still, others support the ban, like Barack Kordovich from Panama. He says he wants to feel safe when he's traveling to the U.S. I don't think that Trump will... Uh make the bad decision for his country. Now, most of the travelers we spoke with say there simply has to be a better way, and they do say they are seriously worried how far this ban will eventually go. Back to you. Lisa Siegel reporting tonight from LAX. Another major ruling from the Supreme Court today struck down a California law that forced faith-based pregnancy centers to inform women that they have free or low-cost abortion services available elsewhere. In a 5-4 to four ruling, the court said the FACT Act limited the center's free speech rights. Our critics claim the centers often shame women, spread medical misinformation, and deceptively claim to be medically licensed. Head at 5.30 here on CBS2, we'll hear how California's pro-choice advocates might respond to that ruling today. Well, be sure to stay with CBS2 News for all the latest on the travel ban and any breaking news. You can get the latest information anytime at CBSLA.com. Now to some breaking news today. One person has died and 12 injured after an explosion at a Texas hospital. We're told the hospital was under construction at the time of the blast and all the victims were construction workers. It was so powerful it even knocked out power to downtown Gatesville. That's 35 miles west of Waco. Hospital administrators were caught by surprise. 
It was a tremendous blast. It, it felt like a, a bomb had exploded. I would tell you that was the first thought that went through my mind. Authorities believe they have located all of the victims. However, they are still searching through the rubble. Investigators have not ruled out a gas explosion. They have evacuated patients to other hospitals. And now for the second time in a week, the LAPD has released body cam video of an officer involved shooting. It's part of a new policy to make police work more transparent and to build trust with the community. CBS 2 Sandra Mitchell is live in the newsroom now with the video and more on the story. Sandra. Well, Pat, Jeff, really unusual for a police department to just voluntarily release this video, but that's exactly what the LAPD is doing as they try to show the public what their officers are up against on the streets. It's real and it's raw. An LAPD officer running after a suspect that he thinks has a gun. May 12th, South Los Angeles. After ordering the suspect to comply, the officer fires several shots at the suspect, Kevin Palencia. Palencia runs away and falls to the ground, but he's not wounded and he doesn't have a gun. Officer needs help, Normandy, 5-5. The LAPD released the video today as a way to update the public. These investigations can take up to 11 months to complete. However, in order to provide you with context for this use of force, we want to provide you with a better picture of what we do know at this point. The LAPD says two Metropolitan Division officers were trailing Palencia when they saw a gun in his hand, but they didn't see him drop it. Because the officer's view was obscured at times, he believed that the suspect was still armed at the time he fired his weapon. Security video from a nearby home appears to show Palencia throw his gun on the ground. And the LAPD says another suspect picked up the gun and ran away. Police did arrest that man after searching his home, but they never found the gun. Palencia also was arrested for being a felon in possession of a firearm. So again, nobody was injured. The investigation is continuing. The LAPD is hoping this video is just going to show the pressure that is involved with police work and how officers are forced to make life or death decisions under very extreme situations. Pat, Jeff, back to you. Sandra, thank you. Remembering a fallen hero, the body of a fire captain shot and killed in an ambush responding to a call taken back to Orange County today. The latest on the investigation into his death. Plus, a woman goes racing up an airplane aisle, swearing up a storm before she's carted off in handcuffs. What had her so upset? And if the Lakers fail to pick up ta talent soon, Magic Johnson says he's out. Hey, everybody, I'm Garth Kemp. Coming up, what a day today. We're heading towards the fourth. Your forecast is on the way.